Well, Congressman Tom Suozzi back on Capitol Hill and the House of Representatives. Yeah, the Long Island Democrat representing New York's 3rd District was sworn in last week, replacing former Republican George Santos, who was expelled from Congress. Joining us this morning here in studio is Congressman Suozzi. I would say the new, but the renewed. You're back in Congress again. Last time we saw you was the day before the election. Now you're officially sworn in, I as we I saw. Here. Was I think was it, it was the day, day before. before. Yeah. Oh, oh, great. Yeah, yeah it snowed was. that day, yeah. election day. Yeah. It was a big, 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 big victory. But it worked out for you. You were sworn in last week. First of all, how was the ceremony? Ceremony was awesome. It, you know, normally you get sworn in with everybody together. I was sworn in by myself, mm -hmm. so I got to give a speech on the floor of the Congress. Now, I've given 50 speeches on the floor, but there's usually 10 people in the room, and it's on C-SPAN. Nobody sees it. <laughs> this was with hundreds of members of Congress and hundreds of people in the gallery. And I got up there, and I said what I was going to say. I said to the members of Congress, Democrats and Republicans, wake up. Mm -hmm. The people are sick of this. They want us to work together. They're sick of True. all the, the partisan finger-pointing. Let's get stuff done. People are very worried about the border, they're worried about cost of living, they're worried about Ukraine, they're worried about Israel and Gaza. Work together, let's solve some problems. And you campaigned kind of on that, and, and people solving problems instead of being too far to the right or too far to the left, as both parties really kind of campaign towards their bases. But I want to ask you, not to start on a negative, but you're there already, and you want to preach this bipartisanship, but realistically, is there any chance we're going to see it? Because especially in an election that, year. That's what politics is about, is trying to take what the people say. You're supposed to be a representative of the people mm. and get it to the elected officials to actually do what the people say. So I've talked to a lot of members of Congress already since I've been there. I was there for like, you know, 72 hours last week. But I spoke to dozens and dozens of members, and they're all kind of discouraged. You know, they're all kind of like, you know, what'd you come back for? You know, nothing's getting done. This is both sides. Democrats, I have a lot of friends on both sides mm. of the aisle. And... Most people in Congress are not the nut jobs. Most people are doing this for the right reasons. They want to make the world a better place to live in. They want to do stuff to make the world a better place. So let's place. talk about the nut jobs, okay? Yeah. Because are they the ones that are holding back any kind of movement towards passing bills? Like, yeah. you got an immigration bill, yeah. right? That a lot of people seem to have some kind of hope the, in. The public believes that we should make that bipartisan compromise. And you have the far right in this example. Sometimes it's the far left, but this is the far right that are holding up the votes and stopping Speaker Johnson from actually putting it on the floor. If you put it on the floor, I said in my speech, Speaker Johnson, put this on the floor and I guarantee it will pass. It will pass because everybody wants to compromise. This bill was endorsed by the Wall Street Journal, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the president of the border union, who's a big Trumper, right. endorsed this bill because more border agents, more immigration judges, more wall, more detention Why beds. Why doesn't the president just sign something? He has the power. He, you he go, undid you, the bills no. for, with Trump. No, you Trump you got to go through the legend. Right now, the system we have is designed for 400,000 people a year. Now there's millions of people coming to the border every right. day. This new bill will take the asylum process down from years, almost 10 years in some cases, down to weeks. They, they talk about how it's 5,000 people a day, 5,000 people a day. If we pass this bill, 90% of those people will be sent back right there and then within weeks. 90% will be sent back. But that's an example of saying, I mean, you can talk to your fellow Congress people and say people want things done, but they're not getting it done, even when a bill has been presented to them. So how do you change that mindset in Washington? We, I, we, have, to, we have to call out what it is, okay? Everybody's a coward, and they're, they're, they're being bullied by their base. Mm. The base, the base, the base. You always hear about the far right, the far left. Everybody's afraid of their base. We have to start talking to the people in the middle, which are the normal people watching your show, mm -hmm. who are like, hey, come on, just get something done. And so I'm going to just keep on saying the same thing and keep on working on this issue. Uh, I've been put on Homeland Security, okay? I was on Ways and Means before. Oh, did you see Jay Johnson? He was the yes, former head yes. of Homeland uh, I just Homeland said I want to meet him and get his advice. Yeah, he, he's a great person. He's going to be on the show in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about some other things like the, the repeal of the cap on salt? Is there any hope there? It's not going to happen this year, but I've already been talking to the Republicans on Long Island. We have to rebuild the coalition I had before. Democrats and Republicans in Congress, governors and mayors throughout the country, teachers and firefighters and other interested public employees that want to get this done, we have to get that, that salt deduction back. It's totally a body blow to New Yorkers when they put that in place in 2017. I know. Can I ask you, you know, so you're back uh, in D.C. 
you moved be into George Santos's office, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, man, I, what was the, what was the first thing you did when you walked into that office? I called up the guys and said, "I have to get all these DNA samples out of here." <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what did you do? Did you like Lysol everything? I I, may, I really did call up a lot of people and say, "Listen, we got to clean this. We got to clean this place out a lot more than we have." So uh, physically and metaphorically. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, I want to ask you one other serious question here. Um, over the weekend. Vice President Harris kind of surprised a lot of people by making the announcement that there should be, there has to be, a ceasefire in Gaza. That kind of came out of nowhere. First of all, are you surprised by that at all? No, I'm not surprised. But I mean, the bottom line is, is most normal people say, listen, we see all this, this carnage. It's awful. You know, we want to see something happen. But we have to remember that Hamas is not some loose confederation of desert soldiers. Mm -hmm. They are sophisticated, disciplined, terror army that wants to destroy Israel and kill Jews. They have to be stopped. So we have to be tough and, you know, we all want to, we want to cease fire? Hamas should lay down its weapons and release the hostages. Okay, then we can have a ceasefire. We have to be tough here and we have to keep on going after Hamas. And there's a lot of great things that are happening. I'm hoping something's going to happen. I'm bringing a, a hostage parent to the State of the Union on, on, on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. A guy who's from my district is held hostage right now. I met him when he was in high school. Solomon checked to school. Mm. Got to be tough. We wish them well. Absolutely. Uh, hey, before you yeah. go, I was reading Newsday this week. What about your son Joe, he's got, he's got it. He's up in Super Triple Joe. A with the Mets. Super Joe. He's, he's got oh. an opportunity. <laughs> Doing well in spring training right now too. Yeah, he yeah. went last year. He went from uh, the Brooklyn Cyclones to the Binghamton Rumble Ponies yeah. to the Syracuse Mets. He's in Triple A, mm. and uh, he's a great kid, and he, he inspires me. He's always been underestimated, and he always comes out on top. He always performs. He's going to keep on going, try and chase his dream. As if you weren't already rooting for the Mets. Now you got more reason. I'm He's the fourth year in their system, so this is not just signing a congressperson's son for no, publicity. No this way. is a real deal. I've heard of more than <laughs> <outside>. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate you joining us. Good luck down there in Washington. Thanks so much. Yeah.